day we see things that is not always pretty. People crossing the line. Sometimes crossing way over the line. When you think no one's watching, would you step up and say something or step away? There are a lot of tough decisions out there. So the question is, what would you do? The heartbreaking news is reported every year. A four-year-old girl is dead after she was left in a hot car for hours. And sadly, this summer is shaping up to be one of the most deadly. Last year at this time, 12 children had died after being left in unattended hot cars. So far this year, that number has more than doubled. The summer season is not even over yet, and already we've surpassed the total number of deaths for all of 2015. We're outside Stoney's Restaurant in South Orange, New Jersey. Diana is playing a mom who's running a quick errand and decides to leave her child in the back seat. But don't worry, of course, that baby is actually a dog. And the crying? It's just a recording. You see a baby left alone, strapped into a car seat, crying. What would you do? Is everything okay? That's my baby. She's, is she crying again? Leave her in the car by yourself. Well, it's only been a few minutes. It doesn't matter. Like, we need to We're actually social workers. We'd have to call that in. I don't think it's a big deal. It's a baby. It's my baby, and I'm back here now. I'm your baby. I'm going to have to call it in. It's not that hot. Look closely. You can see she's visibly shaken and can barely dial the phone number. I do it all the time, anyway. Take her out of the car. I have to run one more errand. Okay, are you going to be here for a second? Are you kidding me? It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're sorry. No, you're overreacting. We can't do that. It's okay. Okay, it's okay. That's okay. You're all right. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We just want to show people how dangerous it is, and you showed us. I was really worried for that baby, and it was. Oh my god. What do you want people to know? If you're lucky enough to even have a child, to take them with you. If you have to go into the store, I'm sure it's a pain to get them out, and it's a process. But it's not worth leaving them in the car. Look what's happened to so many. It's sad. It's a sad reality, but we see that not everyone steps up. This man walks by, hears the baby's cries, but does nothing. These women also say nothing. Even this mother-to-be. She hears the cries, looks into the car, but leaves without saying a word. We continue to roll. As soon as this woman gets out of her car, she hears the cries. She's angry, but she doesn't know what to do. We send over our actress, Tracy, What's wrong? to talk to her. Her baby's in the car, and I just saw her get out of the car and walk away. I don't know where the fuck she's, what she's doing. You can't, you can't go to Dunkin' Donuts and leave your baby, your crying baby in the car. I don't care how long you are leaving. I don't know why you're involved, but you can't do that. I'm sorry, I don't know why you're doing this, but you can't leave your baby in the car. Well, I was just grabbing a coffee. I mean, what could happen? Some, anything could happen. I locked the door. No one's going to take her. Okay, that's fine. It's your decision, but I just want, I'm just offering you some advice as a fellow parent. Fed up with Diana, this mother, upset, walks away. She's fine. And when she returns 20 minutes later, she's at it. You gotta get the baby out of here. I'm gonna be right back. Okay. This is the head of my son's preschool. Why are you calling me? While she's making that call, we come out. Hello there. To say hello. She's an actress. But it's not real, baby. Oh, it's not real. Oh my god. I know what you're doing with the chills. Because I have kids, you know? Are you glad you spoke up? I am glad I spoke up. I'm really glad. This time we switch things up slightly by replacing our mom with a dad. This woman, out with her husband and small children, hears the baby crying. I will wish it hurt me. And then immediately calls 911. Uh, there's an infant crying in the corner. There's no, uh, adult crying. There's no adult And when we send our father in, they quickly let him know exactly what they think of hey. what he did. Is there a problem? Yeah, I just called the police. I was just gone for a minute. I was just trying but, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it takes so long to, like, get the kid out and go and make up back. It's, it's too difficult sometimes. Look, I'm trying to be a good parent here, but you know how it is with juggling things all over the place? I'm janking you on this. 
the TV show, What Would You Do? He's, a, he's an actor. As parents, you really were touched and worried. You know, you have to do the right thing. And sometimes it's it's harder for the parents, but then when stupid, you're trying to <laughs> tell me that's the right thing, you know, you kind of get upset about it. This next couple approaches the car and they're standing by when our dad returns. So you think I have to keep a watcher for a minute? I gotta go get my change. They even agree to do some babysitting. I'll be right back, all right? I, I didn't get my change. Right. Sorry about it. Thanks, thanks. How long were you going to stick around? If you uh, it's to check in. It's a yeah. <laughs> They're willing to keep an eye on her little one, but the baby is still inside that car. And while the temperature outside only reaches a mild 77 degrees Fahrenheit, it takes just minutes for the temperature inside the car to exceed 97 degrees, potentially deadly for a child. This mother and daughter are walking by our car, listening to the crying as our dad returns. Is that your baby? Yeah. You can't leave her by yourself. She's hysterical. I just, I just had to run. I just had to run in for a bit. Do you think I'm just on any other sides of the police? Don't ever do that again. Take the bathroom, just carry it with you. Yeah, I got all this stuff. It's just a bunch of things. It doesn't matter. You can't do that. Don't open the window. I got to get that. You know, I just, I just, I haven't got my sandwich yet, though. That's my important in your child. But the child's fine. They're back. Crack the window. Chris, I'm telling you, I'm not afraid of yours. I'm going to tell the public. No, I just, I just. She begins to make her way over to a police officer, and we are. Right behind. I'm high hearted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was going to say, you You know the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What do you say to those who say it's, it's none of your business? You don't know that. Sorry. One of the biggest problems in today's world is nothing's ever anyone's business anymore. So more people just jump in, be a little bit more assertive and just do what's right. They'll be okay. Coming up. I'm thirsty. Can I have some water? A caregiver. Just shut up, okay? Who only cares about herself. How am I supposed to pay for my meals if your car doesn't work? Who cares? You. They do. That's my fault. What would you do next? What would you do continues. We're in Brooklyn, New York at the Nail Boutique Salon. Giselle is a caregiver, spending the day with her patient, Bill. Come on, Bill, we're gonna be late, please. He suffers from Alzheimer's, but instead of giving him some much-needed mental therapy, this day at the spa is all about Giselle. You know, I do this every week. I take him out, spend his money, and then drop him back off at the home. Hello. Come on, Bill, give me a moment. That's right, Giselle is taking a personal day. And it's all on Bill's tab. Thank you. A caregiver who couldn't care less. I do not get paid enough for this. What would you do? Hello? Hey! Focus on that. I am in the nail shop, getting my nails done. <laughs> While Giselle chats away, her patient gets impatient. What the hell are you doing? Immediately, Giselle wants Bill to stop making friends and start making payments. How am I supposed to pay for my nails if your car doesn't work? I don't know. Don't take my money. That's my money. It's fine. He's not even going to remember in five minutes. He just resets. You know, remember you asked him for his phone No. Oh. I mean, it's expensive. I had a view and all that. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> 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 trying to say what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> but she is serious. And now this woman can't stay silent any longer. No, 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 no. You need a paycheck for what you do. You cannot take his credit card and use it on your personal account. You're waiting for That's just not right. You got your money back. You getting paid for the job? So if you use his credit card, it's for police time. I can use his card for expenses, and this for him. him. For him. For him. He's not even supposed to be in this salon right now. It's not. 
if not for him. He's even looking like he's frustrated and don't want to be here. Why? It is not right. It's not right. It's what would you do, the TV show? Oh my God. <laughs> what got to you? That's my mother. That's my mother. That's anybody. But he's 93, he doesn't remember, she says. So, because I don't remember doesn't mean it's not right. He just matters that he was okay. That's enough for you. Okay. Bill say, I want some water. Give me some water. Oh, I'm thirsty. Give me some water. Just shut up, okay? You're driving me crazy. And now, Giselle is downright rude to the man she's supposed to be taking care of. This is what I have to do with everything. I stick it. Oh, you're so useless. No, that's wrong. I need one day. I think everybody needs a tool. Right. Kindly and deliberately, she tries to find a compromise. Maybe there's a happy balance that goes in half. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, maybe like you do something for yourself and then you guys go to the park. Like, what's the matter with the park? That's a awesome. But all Giselle wants is another drink with her pedicure. This thing works. What's your limit on here? Are you serious? She's paying for your pedicure. He's got dimension, not even like anything. Oh, okay. You know. Throughout the day, Giselle makes it clear she might hate the job, but she loves the benefits. Some of the clients laugh uncomfortably. He laughs at me. Look, I mean, look, he can sit and look at the sunlight and I But her attitude really strikes a nerve with this woman in scrubs. Here, Belle. Put this one. And now, Joelle Pittman can't hide her disgust. All right, so I'm sorry. Do you need help? Where does he need to put that? In his pocket. Oh, okay. I need to go to the bathroom. You don't need to go to the bathroom. He's fine. And if he does, he has a diaper on. He's okay to wait 10 minutes. You don't have to stand me on the phone. We don't, we don't know what that's like. My grandma has Alzheimer's, so I know what that's like. Sir, are you okay? Uh, you sure? You I need don't know. water? You need anything? Mm. You are making a scene. You are making a scene. You are. And that's a disgrace for the Because the point of the deal is that they can't help themselves. It's not to come in and hurt you and do something. And now Joelle does more for Bill than his caregiver has done all day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so he has to go to the bathroom. Since you're on the clock, you can take him. Oh my gosh, Colby. Are you going to help me? Can I help me? Help me. Help me. Okay. Time to tell Joelle her prayers have already been answered. How are you? You good? Are you good? Wow. Oh Tell us what you're thinking. My grandma has Alzheimer's and dementia. So you thought about your grandma? I thought about her. I just want her to treat them like she would treat someone that was related to her. Someone that was like the cousin taking care of themselves. And I hope that someone would take care of my grandmother the same way. Just out of kindness. Just out of kindness. Your message to people who act like that when they're supposed to be taking care of someone. Just consider that one day you'll be older and you're going to praise it in that moment that somebody is going to care enough to help you. If you're lucky. Coming up. He's a hunter. This is it. This is your break. She's the prey. You live right down the block. If you saw him moving in for the kill, what would you do next? What would you do continues. The streets can be dangerous. And only teenagers.
dangerous. Our target. Girls as young as 12 years old, not runaways, but girls from the suburbs. Especially when they're all alone and vulnerable. Hey, you play guitar? Yeah. Nice, me too. You got a college around here? No, I'm in high school, I'm 15. You're 15? Really? You look way more mature than that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to school today. My parents are gonna be so mad. Oh, what they don't know, right? Hey, you wanna come over and jam? Uh, I don't know, I don't really know you. I know a lot of people in the music business. I can help you out. Really? You're all enjoying a cup of coffee when you overhear an off-key conversation. A 15-year-old girl being lured into a suspicious and potentially dangerous situation by a much older man. Do you try to change his tune or mind your own business? What would you do? Okay, cool. That sounds like it would be fun. Awesome. My car's right out back. Okay, let's go. Cool. Our hidden cameras are rolling at Singer Hill Cafe in Oregon City, Oregon. Are you guys here by yourself? I didn't go to school today. So you're kind of playing hooky, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Our predator, Tyler, should come over and play. I actually have a, like, a full studio at my house. That's awesome. Becomes more and more persistent. Now my car's out back. We can go, we can go now if you want. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know you. This dad and his daughter take notice. Yeah, alcohol and it's a pot. You smoke pot? I'm from 15, so... And when we send our predator away... I'll step back. It's cool. Okay. He checks in. You don't know that? No. Is it Yeah. He said that he has, like, a music studio at his house. The father and daughter duo offers our team some advice and an alternative. Down the television for the coffee shop. Okay, and I should be there. I refer to it as risk and what you're risking. Yeah. And when our predator returns, they're willing to take a risk to save a stranger. You uh, ready to go? Um. Yeah. I know where we're going. We're just going down the street. Do you know each other? No, we just, well, we just met, but she's gonna she's gonna play with us in real jam. But watch what happens when Tyler grabs Meg's guitar case. You should probably have a car. Yeah. You should put it in. No, she wants to put it in the car. We're gonna we're gonna jam, we're gonna help her with some of her music. Who's playing with that? Huh? You're missing out on a good opportunity. No, I don't. Seriously. Let's go. Now it's time to make our way to meet this gentleman. Hi. This is what would you do? The TV show. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I'm sorry. What was going through your mind? He's a reaper. He's gonna tear off and of her life, and she's not gonna come back, and her family's not gonna know where she is. So you were going to live here, go away, with him. For you, it was worth the risk of getting it. I would feel absolutely terrible if I were to get it. We roll again. Why don't you think about it? I'm going to go back for her. When I come back, we should, we should go. Okay. Cool. When Meg is left alone, these women take the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he just seems like very nice. All right, And when Tyler returns, is he ready to go? Cars are back. Um, no, I, I don't know. Our team is no longer alone. <laughs> This is music business, sir. Come on, let's go to my place of course right here. Meg pretends she's still unsure. But this woman won't give up on our undecided team. You know it's not okay. Your dad is telling you now. Listen to your gut. Yep. Interfering with your career? Yes, I know. Have him, uh, have him get angry and leave? What? Thank you. 
have to find out why these women came to Meg's rescue. She's got way as an actress. She's okay, and so was he. Well, let me tell you, he was not going to be okay in a minute. We know about the sex trafficking, trafficking in Portland, and how, how, how serious that is. More gullible girls like her. Oh, very gullible. Oh, very gullible. They want the stars, and he was promising. You picked the wrong couple yeah. of women. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> he, he didn't have the chance. Throughout the day, lots of people warn Meg not to go with him. What's the hold up? Um, I, I don't know. Let's go. But when words fail to stop her, she said it to me. If you really want it, you gotta, you gotta take a chance. Okay. Half of the bystanders watch as Meg leaves with our predator saying they were unsure of what else they could have done. You wish you would have done more, you said. I, but I didn't know what I could do besides hold on to her. And when she was walking out, your heart must have been sinking. Yes, I was very upset. And I was going to find out the license plate number and maybe call. And now we roll one last stop. This is your break. And this table of college students overhears the off-key conversation. I, I don't know, I just don't want to get in the car with you. If I don't know you, Come over to my house. If you're having fun, cool. If not, I'll bring you back. I've got a hot tub. You can relax. You live right down the block, you said? When Tyler steps away, he's we'll come back and we'll go, okay? Jennifer Page offers quick and simple advice. Don't. Do you think I should, like, trust him or not? No. And then our predator returns. Hi, right, ready to go? Um, I, I don't know. And Jennifer steps right into the spotlight. She doesn't want to go. You want to go, right? She speaks for Meg and confronts Tyler. She doesn't want to go. She's got right. Look, look at her. You can come with us. It's okay. As our predator becomes more aggressive, she doesn't want to go with you, sir. So does Jennifer. She doesn't know you. You can put her guitar down, and she does not want to go. Mind your business, okay? Grab her hand. And that's it. Okay, let's go. Come on, this is your last chance. Let's go. Remove your hands from her. She does not want to go. Thank you. All right, you're lost. What do you think, Rachel? Yeah. That's okay. Nice to meet you, Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Hi there. I'm John Kenyonis. This is what would you do in a TV show? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You okay? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why get involved? From personal experience, I know that you don't just trust anyone. You were adamant. Yes, yeah, because she didn't know what she wanted to do, and she needed someone to be her voice for her. What would your advice be for young girls? You aren't being rude by saying, no, thank you, I don't want to come with you. Like, you don't have to be nice to everyone, especially a stranger. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, it's performance and hits substance. The hard sell. So now it's on a big tour. What an illegal and dangerous shortcut. Not being such a wimp in the field. Who will inject themselves <laughs> into the situation? <laughs> what would you do? Coming up. What would you do? Continues. You hear it? All the time. Harder. Better. Faster. Stronger. But what if to get to that, you relied on the improper boost of performance enhancing drugs? We turn now to a new development tonight with that weapon suspension of baseball slugger Alex Rodriguez. Stunning news about Lance Armstrong. The US anti doping agency is banning Armstrong from cycling for life. What happens when those national headlines get closer to home? How will people react when it's a local high schooler being pressured by friends into trying steroids? <laughs> <laughs> We're putting it to the test at the Dancing Blender Smoothie Company in South Orange, New Jersey. Really steroids. Steroids. Yes. It really enhances your performance. Like with your speed, like you would kill. Will customers flex their muscles and tell these drug pushers to cut it out? If you want to be bigger, faster, and stronger, this is what you need. Or will they exercise their right to remain on the sidelines? What would you do? 
It's like going to the doctor's office and taking a shot. This first customer listens in. This kid from Sandwich, they're going to come for it. It's just with it. It's not how it works. Sarah isn't the way to go. Is it dangerous? It's not dangerous at all, no. Let's do it now. When we get back, it's your turn, okay? Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, he's in the muscle business himself. I work at the gym. I've been in this in my profession. There's a lot of side effects. What does it do? First, you strengthen your testicles, messing with your hormones and all that stuff. You get very angry. He offers Adam some alternate options to bulk up. Work out. Eat a lot of protein. Don't cheat. Are you caught in a get trouble? I can't tell you what to do. I can just die. How are you? I'm John Kinyanis. <laughs> Why is it important to say something to him? Because I don't want him to make a mistake. I don't want him to make a mistake that could harm his life at all. Back in the store, this customer waits until our jocks leave. Then he approaches Adam. Thank you. What was you do? I was a competitive swimmer. Yeah. So it was all about what happens in my mind that made me great. Okay. And then just doing the physical work, working out. My only message was like, you can do whatever you want, but I just wanted him to know that he could make the choice. The choice these customers are faced with is whether or not to get involved. So stop being such a wimp and let's do it. I don't know. They overhear what's happening, but they don't step in. So we step up to find out why. We was telling my son if he ever found himself in that position to immediately leave. So this was a teaching moment. This is a teaching moment. Steroids are a big deal. Stop being a whip. I don't know. If you want to be bigger and faster, I'm sure this is what you got to do. Is it? As this customer is leaving the shop, he has a chance to talk to Adam. Thank you. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I was good. Your message to guys like that young man? Stick to your gut. You can do it naturally. You don't have to do steroids. It's a performance of this. That's exactly what it is. This last couple is sitting close by. It's just to help. It's not to hurt. Okay? But aside from a few glances, they don't seem to be paying much attention. <laughs> then suddenly, Deborah Grushkin is up in a rage. And for the first time all day, someone directly confronts our abilities. <laughs> Why do you care what he does with his body? Because I don't want to say I illegal. I watch him get constantly hurt himself. He's illegal. He's pressured by people. Don't. That's good. 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 It just seemed like a morally wrong thing, and I felt bad for the kid. I felt like he was being pressured into doing something he didn't want to do, and I don't know, I felt obligated to say something. I didn't think I could walk away and not say something. What does it say about you? Why you? I don't know. I'm pretty outspoken. I think I stand up for things that I believe in, and I try to help people. Coming up. She wants to sell him a car. You're a woman, so what do you know about cars? But he's not buying it. They got a pretty girl, they want to take her money, and I don't know how it works. A new car shopper. Well, 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 old attitude. Well, 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 what would you do next? Well, what would you do next?
Love with you do continues. We're at the BMW dealership in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. I'm here to see Chris. Kristen? Your appointment is here. Hi, what can I help you with? You're Chris. Kristen, Chris for short. And our customer, Ben, is not too keen on having a woman salesperson help him buy a car. What do you know about cars? That sexist attitude has been around for a long time. Take this Buick ad. It aired more than 50 years ago. A great and rare machine that a woman can admire and enjoy to the fullest, but only a man can really understand. And Ben is suspicious about Kristen's motivation. I know how it works. They bring in pretty lady like you. No pay for all my work. Our hidden cameras are rolling, and we're wondering how will people react when a customer insists that selling cars is a man's job? Hi, Ben. I'm Chris. Oh, wow. Uh, you're Chris? Yes. Well, Kristen. It's Chris for short. You're going to sell me a car. I am. What can I do? But you're a girl. This woman is signing up to test drive a car. And at first, she seems amused by Ben's attitude. I was expecting a guy. Are you serious or are you kidding? But it soon becomes clear that Ben is driving her to distraction. No offense, but uh, I can definitely. What, that I want to buy a car from a guy? <laughs> Would you, they would buy her some, they would have some you already know about her. Would you buy a car from her? Yes, absolutely. I've worked here for four years. I've grown up around cars my entire life. My father owned the body shop. Watch this. The Chevy didn't make a 327 in 55. The 327 did come out to 62. And it wasn't offered in the Bel Air with the four barrel carb to 64. She's acceptable here. Would you buy like a bride's dress from a guy? Yeah. Ben thinks he's finally getting his point across. Until well, yeah, actually, there's plenty of guys in the fashion business. I mean, straight guys. Straight guys too, yeah. So that's pretty bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Mander. Ben slips away. Sorry. I don't know what to say. I'm in the dark ages. Don't let it undermine your confidence. Well, most guys would be thrilled to have you film the car, right? Thank you. Hi, I'm Jack and Jonas. They were actors. Are you kidding me? Typically, yeah. yeah. sex is pain. Oh. <laughs> Tell us what was going through your mind. I said, look, it's not worth dealing with a job. Yeah, this is Ben. He's really a nice guy. I am. My mother raised me much better than that. <laughs> I was going to say, you were like, right on. <laughs> but as the day goes on... Oh, yeah. Is there a guy I can talk to? I think this lady knows how to sell cars. Ben's attitude about who should sell cars I'm certain that she's selling a car, right? is a tough sale to female customers at the dealership. <laughs> and yet women aren't the only ones who stand up for Kristen. Did you buy a car from a, from a woman? I did. My first BMW. I'll give her a chance to see what she does. I mean, they got a pretty girl, they want to take your money, and I know how it works. And as our bully leaves the building, I'm gonna go somewhere where I can talk to a guy. But... I think you should. He even accuses Ben of misrepresenting the BMW brand. It's definitely a BMW vacation. I'm sorry. As the showroom nears closing time, in walks Mary Darbuto. You're a woman, so what do you know about cars? You're kidding, right? If there was just, I could speak to a guy, that'd be great. If looks could kill, she doesn't confront him, but instead shares what she's thinking with Kristen. You can't change it. The guy who's sexist, he's an idiot. You can't change it. I'm shocked. Yeah, but I don't care. 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 I see. I've never experienced that. What is it? I think it's just a piece of purpose in the head. And you're better off just like pushing yourself upon it and just saying you know something. Well, he just won't go away. He's back for one last day. Sorry to interrupt. Were you able to get someone for me? No, no one's available right now. I'm sorry. I can still help you if you're interested. That's all right. I'm going to spend my $90,000 so I can talk to a man. You can't change stupidity. And you can't change the fact that you're on. What would you do? How are you? I'm John Kenyonis. 
It's what would you do? Oh my goodness! <laughs> that was great. You really were angry. I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was very angry. What would you say to those men who still think that car buying is a guy's thing? Rethink that, because women today are doing exactly many of the jobs that men are doing. They're fighting for the country, our country, and they're building cars and doing everything. So, what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is you can't teach stupid. <laughs> I'm John Quinones. What Would You Do? We'll be back here next week. But you can connect with us anytime. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.